Hello everyone, good morning. You get your morning coffee, I just got mine. In this video, we're talking about themes inside the world of WordPress. Here are the questions we're gonna answer in this video. So number one, what in the world is a theme? And then after that, what themes do I personally recommend? After that, what themes do Fortune 500 companies use? That's a bit of a trick question, but we will answer it. And then finally, if it's feeling like information overload, that's okay. I'll go over a few common situations you might find yourself in and sort of give you my advice on like which theme path makes sense for your situation. Let's jump into the first question though. So what in the world even is a theme? If you asked me this question a decade ago, I could have given you a really simple answer. Uh, but if you ask me today, you just get the shrug emoji. And this is because WordPress has changed a lot in the last several years. So it used to be that a theme was in control of the look and feel of your website. And there was this clear distinction between the content of your website and the pre oops, I just smashed the microphone and the presentation or styling of your website. So there was a separation between content and styling. In the modern era, that line has been completely blurred. And so this question of even what is a theme is a little bit confusing. Um, because if you go into your WordPress dashboard and you know you click on appearance and then uh, click editor or you know click customize, I'm sure you've clicked around a little bit and explored. I mean, you can control the templates, you can click on styling, and just with a click of a button, you can you know click on one of these to change the color theme, or you could go back, you know, I could save that, you can go back and start editing the template. So for example, imagine on my website, if I go to one of my uh, bean, my recipes, like bean salad, what if you didn't want this little line that says written by the username in the category, or you know, you could just go into any template you want and without digging into code, without uh, needing to download a different theme, you can make those changes yourself now. So in the past, we could just say that a theme controls the look and feel and the presentation of your website, and then WordPress outside of a theme is what just manages um, your posts and your pages, like the raw content. But in this day and age, you can control most things yourself just from the appearance menu. So what in the world even is a theme then? Well, it gets a bit confusing. But essentially, a theme still controls the look and feel of your website. It's just that, in my opinion, themes aren't as relevant as they once were um, because you don't need to install or activate or buy a different theme in order to change the look and feel of your website. What I'm getting at here is when you want to install a different theme, you need to choose carefully uh, because some themes are completely free. Some themes are free but offer a pro or premium version that they'll try to sell you. Some themes are not very aggressive about advertising that pro version. Some themes are super aggressive about trying to get you to buy it. Some themes are not really a theme, but like they're their own completely walled off ecosystem with their own proprietary site builder editor instead of using the WordPress site builder editor. And if it seems like I'm rambling and this is kind of a confusing topic to grasp, that's kind of the point. My goal with this series of videos is for you to learn WordPress itself. I don't want you to learn one specific theme company's product. So that's enough rambling. Right now, let me just go install a few different themes with you and walk you through this, and then I think this will make more sense. So from your WordPress dashboard, if you click onto the appearance item in the sidebar, uh, currently we're using the default theme. So each year, the official WordPress team puts out one sort of official themes so 2025, 2024, 2023. However, there are thousands of themes available for free. So just to give you an official number, there are over 13,000 free themes available. And right now I wanna show you how you can add a new one or use a new one. So from your appearance menu, uh, up here we see this option to add a new theme. And this is where you can search for different themes, but even before you type in a search term, you can just scroll through this and see that there are many, many different themes to choose from. And if you're wondering why I've been rambling for the last few minutes, it's because I feel like a protective parent. I am scared for you to scroll through this and click on some of the, I shouldn't say I'm scared. This feels like a used car sales lot to me. And it feels like each theme is like a used car salesman trying to sell you something. And so, I'm just wanting you to have a frame of reference. You probably don't even need a theme. In the past, this was sort of the only way to customize the look and feel of your website. But especially in the last few years, um, like the default themes of 2025 and 2024, WordPress 
is sort of its own page builder or its own design tool in and of itself. I don't think you really need these themes anymore. And for me, I feel like I need to take a shower after I click on a few of these themes that are available because they claim to be free, but almost each and every single one of them is going to aggressively try to get you to buy their pro version of the theme. And then you won't even be using the WordPress editor anymore. You'll be using their proprietary editor. Instead of clicking on one of these that I know is very aggressive and that I'm not a fan of, I'll click on one that actually seems pretty not aggressive. So it's called Astra. So like, let's just walk through what it's like to install a different theme. So let's say I like this Astra theme. I click install. And then after you install it, just like a plugin, you need to wait until the activate button is there, then click activate. So now I'm using this theme instead of the default WordPress 2025 theme. Now, if I go back to my website and refresh, it's completely different, right? It has a fresh coat of paint. So this theme controls the look and feel of my website. I still have like my welcome text as my homepage in this three column area. I still have my two query loops on my homepage. I did lose my footer area down here. Uh, right where I had uh, my newsletter sign up. It's okay. You can get that back very quickly. But yeah, so this theme, if you, know, if you click on an individual post, the appearance is completely different. And now let me show you, if you want to switch back to your other theme, you can just click on appearance. This will show you all of the themes that you've installed. So there's the one we're currently using, Astra. If I want to switch back to my 2025 theme, you just click activate and you refresh, you're back in business. If you wanna try last year's theme, so 2024, you can click activate, you refresh your website, you can see it's a little bit different. Uh, you get the idea. If you wanna try 2023, activate that theme, refresh, cool. So you can go through and install a bunch of different themes. I like Astra because it didn't um, try to get me to install five different plugins. It didn't throw up an ad on the screen encouraging me to buy their pro version. It's just a good old fashioned, th I mean, it has a lot of advanced features, but in terms of the user experience, it's a good old-fashioned theme that didn't bombard me with used car salesman tactics. So that's the why that's why I walked through this with you. Anyways, if you want to install additional themes, you just click on appearance and then add new theme. There are a lot of different themes to choose from, right? Over 13,000. I'm just warning you, a lot of them will try to get you to install their plugins and their site builder. And before you know it, you're it's, it's a topic called vendor lock-in. Before you know it, you're dependent on their site builder instead of the WordPress editor. And I don't know about you, but I don't wanna depend on just some random company. I wanna depend on the WordPress software itself. So back to this question of uh, what themes do I recommend? Personally, the only themes that I'm going to give my official recommendation for are the official WordPress themes. So as of today, the newest one is 2025, and you know there's 2024, 2023. These are put out by WordPress themselves. And just to let you in on a little bit of a tip here, over the last few years, these themes are not what they used to be. So, you know, if you rewind in history, there's always been the default yearly theme from WordPress, but it wasn't very easy to change the look and feel of these themes. The last few years, WordPress has transitioned, in my opinion, from a content management system into more of its own site builder tool. That's why I really no longer recommend these premium themes that you have to go buy uh, with their own proprietary site builders. WordPress, over the last few years, has morphed into a site builder itself. So I just think it's silly to not use the WordPress software that is available for free, that's open source, and that's amazing. So this really brings us to the next slide of what themes do I recommend? Just as of today, the year is 2025, so I recommend the 2025 theme from the official WordPress team. Now, here's the fun slide. You can build more than you might think. So in our previous video, you and I set up like a two column layout with query loops. That was cool, but that didn't really like change the look and feel like the colors and the space and the design. However, if you search on YouTube for WordPress Pro recreates apple.com in 30 minutes, it's an amazing tutorial that I want you to pull up and follow along with. So this is the video I was referring to. It's by Jamie WP. Jamie is an excellent WordPress instructor. I'm not gonna click through the timeline of this video because I wanna keep this as fair use. Go check out this channel, it's amazing. This video in particular is only 13 minutes long. And Jamie, step by step, clicks through with you the WordPress editor to recreate the apple.com design. It's super cool. Um, I guess the reason I bring this up is because you don't need a premium theme with its own proprietary at site builder editor tool. Over the last few years, 
WordPress itself is now a site builder editor tool. Um, so yeah, in this video, I believe Jamie's using the 2024 theme. You could definitely use the 2025 theme. It's even newer and more improved and better. But yeah, that's my answer to this question. What theme do I recommend? Just the default 2025 theme. Go watch Jamie's video. I th think you're gonna be in for a surprise. You can recreate apple.com's layout. Cool, let's move on to the next section of this video. So what themes do Fortune 500 companies use? Right, because if you're anything like me and you go back into appearance and click on add new theme, remember in our first video in this series, I said organizations like NASA, Rolling Stone, Harvard, Sony, Microsoft, they're all using WordPress. But it's hard to imagine that those companies are scrolling through this used car salesman experience and, and, and you know, like, getting into the to the vendor lock-in walled garden of some proprietary theme and site builder editor i that just doesn't i don't buy that i don't believe that harvard and sony and nasa are, are choosing one of these themes right so that takes us to this question what themes are they using well let's investigate let's put on our, our sherlock holmes hat let's go investigate let's go look at some of these really large organization websites and i'll show you how to dig under the hood and take a look at what theme they're using all right, up first we have NASA. So if you just scroll to sort of like an empty part of the website, so like for example, this featured news area, and you just right click, basically anywhere that isn't an image or text, if you right click, you can then choose that from this pop-up menu, view page source. So that was in Google Chrome, this is Mozilla Firefox. So yes, if you just right click again, view page source. I don't believe Safari makes that available unless you go into preferences and enable it. So try to use either Chrome or Firefox as your web browser. But yeah, let's view the source, view page source. When you click on view page source, you're gonna see something that looks like this. This is just code, this is HTML. Don't worry, in a future video in this series, we're going to learn about HTML. But right now, all you need to do is press Control F or on a Mac, Command F. So Control F or Command F will bring up this find menu. And now, right about here, click here and search for this with me. We're gonna type in themes forward slash. The forward slash is just like if you were gonna make a question mark, but don't hold down the shift key. So just forward slash, themes forward slash. Cool, so anywhere in the source code, you're gonna see like their domain and then slash wp-content slash themes. And then, so they're using a theme called NASA. Now, a little bit of a secret, there is no theme in the WordPress theme directory called NASA. This means that NASA created their own theme. They coded their own theme from scratch called NASA. Let's move on to Rolling Stone. So if I click somewhere that's empty and I click view page source, and then I press command F and I search for themes forward slash. Let me zoom in a little bit here. So they have a subfolder called VIP, but then they have a theme called PMC dash Rolling Stone dash 2022. Again, that is not a theme that exists in the theme directory. They coded and created their own theme from scratch. Sony PlayStation, you can do the same thing. You right click somewhere empty, choose view page source. If we search for themes forward slash, voila, they're using a theme called the PlayStation Dash 2018. And for the final website, Microsoft, click somewhere empty, click view page source, themes forward slash, let me zoom in here. They're using a theme called MS Blogs. So all that to say, the big, big companies that are using WordPress, they're not using themes from the theme directory. They're not getting vendor lock-in. They're not gonna deal with this used car salesman experience. They are coding and creating their own themes from scratch. And then they're essentially just letting WordPress be a content management system. So they're using WordPress to have hundreds, if not thousands of posts or hundreds, if not thousands of pages, right? Just this raw, almost like database experience of WordPress storing the raw content, but then sort of the whole look and feel and theme and template experience that packages up that data, they are coding that themselves. Now, let's wrap this video up because I realize this is information overload. You're probably thinking like, what, so I have to learn how to code now? No, you absolutely don't. I wanna summarize this video um, and give you a bit of advice depending on your situation. So this all comes down to what your goals are. What are your goals? Your goals are gonna be different from the person sitting next to you or the other person watching this video or my goals or someone else. So if you want to actually learn WordPress itself, right, like the default core editor, my advice to you is to use one of the yearly themes. So as of today, that would be the 2025 theme, 
right? And then just watching that Jamie WP video we looked at earlier, you can do a lot with the default editor. Someone else might want have a different goal. Maybe your goal is not to learn WordPress deeply. Maybe you don't really care about WordPress or free and open source software. And maybe if your only goal is that you want a pretty website, but you can't afford a professional designer, well then sure, there's nothing wrong with those, um, those themes in the theme directory. Uh, a lot of people have great luck with them. Uh, I know a, a web design company that used, uh, there was a theme called Divi, D-I-V-I, and they had great results. So there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just letting you know, you might not be learning WordPress itself. You might just be learning some proprietary tool that you bought. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just, you know, the, the spirit and heart and soul of this video series is learning as much about WordPress as humanly possible. You might not, that might not be your goal. Maybe you don't want to learn as much about WordPress as you can. Maybe you just want a pretty website. In that case, yeah, go check out one of the premium themes or one of those themes in the directory. You might have great luck. A lot of people swear by some of those products and themes. However, there is one final option here. What if your goal is to be in complete control of your website, of its data, of its presentation, of its styling, ex its exact brand guidelines, and what if you don't want to be at the mercy of a pro theme, right? Like maybe there's a feature you want, but they don't offer. So what if you want to be able to build any feature that you can imagine in your mind? What if you want to be in complete control of every single aspect and detail of your website? Well, that's what the Fortune 500 companies do. And they have developers that code and create their own theme for them. Now, you don't need to do that. Again, that's not everyone's goal, but in this video series, I am going to teach you how to start coding your own themes and plugins for yourself. Again, I just wanna be crystal clear here. I'm not saying that's a good goal for 100% of people out there, right? That's why everyone has different goals. I just personally really love to teach people how to code so that they are in complete control of their website, but you don't need to do this. now. Uh, we're not going to dig into coding in our very next video. Our very next video is actually going to give us an even clearer goal or a clearer reason of why we should learn code in the first place. In our next video, we're going to talk about custom post types and custom fields. Because in WordPress, WordPress is a lot bigger than just posts and just pages. You can have any number of custom post types. Like we could have another content type instead of just posts and pages, we could have one called pets or books, or team members, or I mean anything. Uh, so we're going to learn how to let WordPress be more about data instead of just being a page builder tool. Uh, because for example, like a pet should have like a species. So instead of like when you edit a blog post, a blog post only has a title and then its main content area. A pet should have like a species field, uh, a weight field, a birth year field, maybe like a favorite food field, like there should be different fields that you're filling in with raw data. And then imagine if you wanted to be able to query on your website, like, oh, show me a listing of only the cats that were born after this year whose favorite food is tuna, right? So if you want your website to start being powered by data, filtered from any angle possible, right? Just more of a data-driven experience instead of just a brochure page builder experience, well, that's an even further reason to learn how to code, but don't worry. In our next video, we're going to see how you can set up custom post types and custom fields without even writing a single line of code. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now, if you're enjoying this video series, there are several different ways to support this YouTube channel. I'll include a link to my website down below, but from my website, you'll find a link to my Patreon. It comes with several different perks. You will receive those same perks if you join the membership feature on my YouTube channel. I have different courses you can join about uh, programming and web development. You can join them on both Udemy and Teachable. Uh, if you're looking for affordable web hosting for the last 19 years, I've used DreamHost in my real life. And if you use my link to sign up at DreamHost, I will receive a bit of compensation for sending users their way. So that's a great way to support this YouTube channel and this video series. You can join my newsletter if you want to. You can follow me on different social media. That's about it. Thank you so much for watching this video until the very end. I hope you feel like you learned something and stay tuned for the next video about custom post types and fields. Take care. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon and YouTube memberships. I don't have any producers yet, but your name could go here. But I want to give a huge shout out to Rodney for being the first sponsor to your member over on Patreon. Thank you very much, Rodney. I really appreciate the support. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.